In the repair shop today, embroidery expert Sarah needs some help. Get in and mix it. Me, mix it? Yeah, yeah, you, you're taller than me. <laughs> to revive a hand-stitched masterpiece. Look at that. Look at that. That's now the last bit's the best. That is really cool. Yeah. And as a family affair, as the Fletchers work together on a gentleman's shooting stick. It looks professionally made, doesn't it? Well, of course, you made it. It's beautiful. Why do you single pack them? We're going to varnish it on top. You reduce it with thinners. Oh. It's not as hard. Oh, here we go. Here we go. The first craftsman to be put to the test, metal worker Dominic Chinea. Hello. Hello. I'm Jane. I'm Joanna. Oh, Hello. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Joanna. I'm Dom. Nice to see you. Joanna Butterwig has brought a rare and curious item. Oh, look at that. That gave her immense joy as a child. And she's hoping the repair shop team can help her replicate that joy for a new generation. Come on in. Thank you. You need to tell us what this is. Yeah. This is a seesaw, which goes up and down and round and round. Hold on. Yes, the seesaw normally goes, goes like up that. and down. And then spins it around. It spins around too. <laughs> so this is from a fun fair then, must be. No, my sister had a very wealthy godmother, and I think she must have brought it over from America in the 1930s. Brilliant. Right. She gave it to me yeah. on the condition that I had it mended. So what did it do? It sat in my garage for probably 35 years. So have you played on this then? You'd... Oh, uh, as a child, endlessly. Yes, yeah? yes, all the time. So you would seesaw and, and then spin around? And round and round, yes. Can we open this then? Should we try? Yeah. yeah. Flap your end over. Yeah. Oh, that's it, yeah. So what would you like Don to do to this then? Make it work. <laughs> I've got a young family that comes and stays with me for about two months every summer. OK. And they're always asking me to get it mended as well, so this is what pushed me into doing it. So they're excited to yes. get on this. And they're very life. adventurous children, so they'll enjoy it too. OK. So you would like it to be usable? Yes, please. And then looking shiny again. Yes, please. That's the that way that you remember wonderful. it. Yes. OK. Thank you, Joanna, for bringing this in. Oh, thank you it's a so pleasure. much. Yeah. Okay. Lovely to thank meet you, you as well. Thank you very much indeed. Right. It's been lovely. You take care now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is cool, isn't it? It is cool. Isn't it brilliant? I feel it was disgraceful of me to leave such a beautiful toy in such a terrible condition for so long. If Dom is able to get it working again, it will be wonderful to have a functioning toy. The children will be simply delighted. So, sounds like you've got your work cut out. The timber on here, I think it's quite nice. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's just structurally, isn't it, really? It's just the mechanism in here, the metal work. This is all rusty, I've got missing parts here. Okay. The main thing is getting it apart, then. That's, yeah, that, you know what, that's going to be the issue, trying to get this mechanism apart. I need to get in there to see what's broken. All right, well, let's get it over to your bench so you can give it apart. Yeah? Try, yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> So this main central hub is my main headache, really. It's holding the whole thing together, and it's also the, main, the mechanism to make it spin, which it isn't at the moment. I'm hoping that this main bar, if I can get this pin out, should just drive out that way, and that one pin is what's holding these two arms on. So if that comes out, then I'll be left with the main hub and two arms, which will be ideal, because then I can put these to one side and just deal with this main central section. The Flexi World Seesaw was produced in America by S.L. Allen and Company back in the 1930s, meaning they are now rare and collectible, providing, of course, Dom can get it up and running again. Let's get these out. Brilliant. So now I've got the wooden pieces out of the way, both big arms. I've got actually better access to the main central hub parts. The rust is so bad that I can't actually really tell what's what in there which makes me a bit nervous. I basically need to break this down into all of its individual components and get it completely apart so I can fix it to then put it back together. As Dom battles to free 90-year-old nuts and bolts, another project is arriving at the repair shop. Valerie Wilson is hoping hand embroidery expert Sarah Dennis can breathe new life into a century-old heirloom 
that was a real labour of love. How are we doing? You all right? I'm all right, thank you. I'm Jay. Hello, Jay. You are? I'm Valerie. Sarah. Hello, Sarah. So what have we got here, then? It's a bedspread that yeah. my mother made. Your mum made this? She made it and she did all the embroidery. She designed it. Oh, my goodness. And um, it took her 500 hours. 500 to hours? Complete. Oh, it's yeah, huge. Yeah, it must look, have done. That's going round all the way all round. All the way it. round. So, how big is this? Is this a, like a double bed? Then? It's a double bed, right. four foot six double bed size. That is. Whoa. Peacocks. You've got peacocks. You've got chickens. Yeah. You've got flowers. Your mum was a good artist then, wasn't she? She was like, a wonderful artist. Draw that. And yes. a beautiful seamstress. I mean, there's, there's cut work, there's fantastic stitches. Cut work is what? What's, what's the You cut actually work? cut the linen away and then reweave stitches in. And then so that's hard to do? It's very difficult. And then there's pulled work where you actually pull the threads together okay. and create a different effect. To make it, make it like a pattern like, like that? Like a honeycomb, yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. It's absolutely beautiful. Was your mum a professional then? Because this is really impressive. Well, I mean, she could have been a professional. She went to the Hornsey School of Art. OK. And um, this was when she was about 22, 23 years old. Right. And she actually did a baby's bonnet that was hung in the uh, Royal Academy. It's quite see. something to have textiles in the Royal Academy. Yeah. They don't yeah. often put textiles no, they in. they don't. But when she graduated from the art school, she'd already met my father. And um, she got married, and in those days, when you get married, that's it. She had me very late. Um, she was 44 when she had me. And uh, she'd had four other children. Um, and she ended up with um, dementia from the age of 55, really. Um, so, um, you know, I didn't have a long. Yeah. But what I have got is this beautiful bedspread and, right. and her, her wonderful embroideries that she did. So, why have you brought it in to us? What, what would you like us to do? Well, occasionally I did um, use it on my bed, right. and it must have got caught underneath one of the legs or something. And without thinking, you sort of pull it, and then you, uh, and I uh, suddenly found that is what had happened. <laughs> But this is nearly 100 years old, isn't it? In four years, it will be 100 years old. So it's not yes. too bad for a 100-year-old, is it, really? Well, no, I suppose not. And it has to be said, I've never dared do anything in the way of cleaning or anything. So right. there's bits, you know, stains Same. and things. Same. What's that, a pen mark? Does it look like biro? It does look like biro, mm. doesn't it? But I just don't know how it happened, actually. If we're able to get this restored... <sighs> it will mean the world to me because she was such a wonderful woman and it gives me a warm glow to know that she has done something that is so incredible. Um, and that's her legacy, really. Thank you for bringing it in. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Leave it with us. All right. Thank you, Valerie. It. Thank you very okay. much. Let me lead you out. You feel a little bit nervous leaving it behind but having said that, it's had nothing done to it for years and it's in such a state and it would be so wonderful for it to be repaired and looking at least as good as it can do. So obviously Valerie was most worried about this rather ragged tear here that she's made with her bed. So I'm going to have to make a backing out of a similar type of linen. The new material goes under the old bedspread, but before I do anything with this tear at all, I need to do something with the biro marks, and they're pretty old and dried in. I'm going to have to use a solvent and work down layer by layer. So I literally drop a tiny bit of solvent onto the biro stain, give it a rub in, and you can see already biro's coming off. I'll leave it for 15 minutes to soak through and I'm going to have to redo it 20, 30 times until it comes clean. So once we've got rid of the biro, I can wash the whole bedspread. And finally, I have to re-embroider it. Valerie's mother was a very, very talented lady, so this is not gonna be an easy job. <laughs>
In an attempt to dismantle the seesaw's rusty central mechanism, Metal Maestro Dom is using heat to help loosen the ancient fixings. I'm terrified of cracking this cast section because cast iron is just a nightmare. If that breaks, I would just be in a world of, of trouble. I don't want to get it too hot because that could risk fracturing and cracking the cast. I'm putting so much pressure leaning on this. If that's all seized up in there, it's just there's a huge risk that something's going to snap or something's going to break. Yes! <laughs> Getting that pin out was nerve-wracking. I'm really relieved that that's out. Now I can finally have access to this main little castle nut in the middle here. At least I can see what I'm working with now. Brilliant. Now I can lift off this top piece. This is a big moment of what's... Ah. There, all right, okay. So that is ball bearings in there. All of these are all individual little loose balls, but that's good. That means basically now I'll bag up all of these balls before I drop them on the floor and lose them, keep those safe, and then the other parts can go off to be sandblasted, clean it all up, and that should reassemble really nicely. That should spin really freely. So I've got all the wooden parts separated from all the metal parts. Uh, now it's just time to sort of get stuck into these. I love the paintwork, it looks beautiful. It's the original paint, uh, really nice. Unfortunately, the paint is just a bit too far gone on these, on the seat and the handlebars. It's uh, always sad to have to sand off the original paint, but Joanna's kind of made that decision for me almost because she wants to be able to use the seesaw again and to be able to use it. These parts at least need to be sanded down and repainted. Hopefully I can keep the rest of the original paint. With the seat and handlebars sanded and primed, they can be finished with a hard-wearing gloss paint. It's a lovely red colour, really is nice, it's deep red, and it's, a, it's the same paint I'm going to use for this, the woodwork as the metalwork for the main central hub section. Different primer, because that's metal, this is wood, but the same top coat, so it all ties in nicely. So I've got all the steel parts for the seesaw back from sandblasting now. It's usually bad news, basically, when things come back from sandblasting. It strips off all the paint, all the flaky rust, all the loose bits, and just leaves me with the bare, solid metal, which is quite often not very much. But in this case, all the metal work looks in really good condition. The main hub, that was really rusty in there. It was all seized with that spinning mechanism. This has cleaned all of that out. So now, once I put the ball bearings back in, that should reassemble really nicely. That should spin really freely. Next, a memento from a special father and son project. Brian Greaves is hoping leather expert Susie Fletcher can preserve his treasured possession. Hello. How are we doing? I'm Jay. I'm Brian. Hello, Hello Brian. I'm Hello. Susie. Hello. Lovely to meet Hello. you. That's nice. This is my father's shooting stick. What's it used for? Then? People out shooting use them when they'd like a bit of a rest, because, you know, you fold it out. And right. you've got yourself a seat. Yeah. So it's like a portable chair? Yeah. OK. Yeah. Nice. So how come you've got this, then? Well, um, it belonged to my father, uh, John Greaves. OK. So my father was probably the most knowledgeable Dickens expert in the country, and he, even the Oliver Twist film, the first musical one, yes. they had him uh, on the set. And he, he lectured all over the country, okay. and in fact all over the world. Yeah, yeah. And, and during these talks, he would become the character. It was amazing. Oh. You'd read a passage from the book, and you'd change his voice, and you'd change his whole uh, demeanour and character. Yeah, yeah. And he, yeah. He, he, he looked like Pickwick anyway. <laughs> um, but he wrote several um, books on Dickens. Really? Uh, I had a very, very memorable and uh, moving almost trip with him right. when I was a young man. I was a photographer, okay. and I went round the country with him, yeah. uh, photographing uh, Dickens' sites, places where that are in the books. Right. Uh, like Hampstead Ponds, which is in Pickwick Papers. Right. But he had a, a very bad leg, okay. and uh, 
uh, because we were standing around a lot, you know how long photographers take <laughs> taking things, he used this. Okay. To uh, have a rest while I was uh, doing the work, but he was a he was a wonderful man. So you two had a good relationship, and if you went touring around, yeah, this is why this has a, an importance because this was a special time, yeah. and, and it brings back you know, mm. memories. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what would you like us to do to the stick? Well, it would be absolutely marvellous yeah. if it could be made usable again. Okay. One, of course, it would be marvellous because of the memories it brings yes. back. Yeah. Yes. But two, it would be jolly useful. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, yeah. it, as you can see here, obviously this all needs replacing. It would be nice um, if it was possible. This is an adjustable device so you can tension the seat okay. and adjust it. Yep. The one on this side was missing when I got the stick and I just made one out of a bit of wire, but of course that isn't isn't a, uh, adjustable. No. So it'd be nice if another one of those could be um, put in. It'll be a challenge, I'm sure, but I'm looking forward to getting started on it. Right. So thanks so much, Brian. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I think if my father was looking down now and he saw what was uh, going on with the shooting stick, he would be uh, amazed and very proud, really, that, that I was taking this trouble and that it did invoke these memories of uh, a wonderful time we had together. So what have you got to do on this one, then? What this needs is the webbing needs to be replaced okay. because it's rotten, and this is all covered with leather. Right. And also, obviously, the leather goes around the handles here. Handles, yeah. But the one thing I'm a little, little out of my depth with is this tension spoke okay. here. We need a new one on this side. Well, yeah. you know, we're going to get on that. I've got to get your brother on that one. OK, you know, that's a good idea. Right. Yeah. So um, why don't I go ahead and start stripping this down? OK, and I'm going to order you the materials that you need for OK, that. perfect. Okay? Thanks All so right. much, Jay. No problem. I'm going to start by taking off the leather on, that wraps around the handle here. It's literally just peeling off in my fingers. The seat mechanism is, is really very clever. And this is the repair that Brian did, which has worked and that's great. But I'm just going to have to remove this metal work as um, this will be replaced. Just open that up, slide that off. So that's lovely. Now I've got this piece taken off, I'm able to use this as the pattern for when I come to make the new, new seat. I just need to take this over to Steve and ask him sweetly if he'll make me a replacement spoke. Hiya. I've got a favour to ask. Right. Right, this is Brian's walking stick. And this is a tension spoke that you can use to adjust the tension on the actual seat. Right. And this is the one that Brian made up, and we oh, would see. like a new one made. Or well, something, another one of those? Yes. But there is a problem, because I also need the stick. I need to cover this with leather. So right. how quickly can we get that done? I'll do it straight away for you. Oh, you're a superstar. OK. Thank you very much. Cheers. So now I've got Brian's shooting stick stripped down, I can start making the inside of the actual seat. We need something in the centre, like to give it a very, very strong core. And there is a material that we use called flax webbing, which prevents the leather that covers it from, from stretching, because obviously there's a lot of weight goes on this when you're sitting on it. This is the first thing to get sewn onto the ends of uh, the shooting stick Right, so, just lay that on the flax. This is pulling the, the flax really tightly over the fitting to get that to really bond super tight. So now I can go ahead and sew that together. So just um, waxing my threads. This is a linen thread, which is a natural material. And if I didn't cover it with a beeswax, the friction of it going through the material would start to fray each of the fibres. Mm. 
nice tight seam we've got going there. All we need to do is just run a bit more glue along here, make sure that webbing is not going to start fraying and sew the other end. Outside the barn, it's laundry day for the century-old embroidered bedspread. Having removed the ink stains, Sarah must now gingerly hand wash the delicate linen. So what I've got for you, we're going to wash in this one. Yep. And I gathered you might need to rinse it as well, dear. I do need to rinse it. Look at this. I've got a lovely mango. An old mango. <laughs> <laughs> Sorted. Brilliant. So now what we've got to do then? Yeah, we've got a clean drum. Yeah. And we need to put in some pure soap. OK. And that just goes in like that. And then, literally, water softener. What do we do now, then? Get in and mix it. Me? Mix it? Yeah, yeah, you, you're taller than me. <laughs> OK. That's fine. That's fine as long as it's mixed up. So now we just put it in, okay. but really gently. Right. Now we have to leave it for a little while. That's the washing? Yeah. When I used to wash my shirts, I used to get a collar like that. Yeah. And proper scrub yeah. it. You can't. You just can't do it. A, it's old linen, and B, you've, you've got all the lo uh, embroidery on it. I thought we were going to wash this. No. You got me out here under forced pretenses. <laughs> wow. We're putting it in there to just wash out all of the soap. Yeah, and just rinse it off. And then we leave that in there for how long? It, well, we can change it now. So just let the water drip out yeah. as well. Okay. That's it. Sure you can manage that? Yeah, I can just about. Before the excess water can be squeezed out of the bedspread, it's wrapped to prevent any marking from the mangle. OK, so let's fold this to this. Yep. So we're going to have to go around the other side of the mangle. Off we go. Yeah? Yep. Nice. Look at that. Look at that. That's now the last that bit's the best. Is really cool. Yeah. So what is it like? Is it all right now, then, yeah? Yeah, it's much drier, so we'll hang it out on the line. OK. So yeah. gently, if you go that way, and I'll feed it to you, as it were. Yay! That's cool. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> With the bedspread clean and dry, Sarah could begin work on patching the damaged sections. So before we can even start repairing the bedspread, we have to make sure that the fabric I'm using is the same colour as the bedspread, and as you can see, it's white. So we tea dye, we actually dye it with tea to make the white go into a, a sort of antique linen cream colour. And I've decided from my samples there that I need two litres of hot water just as if you're making tea. And it's a bit like a chemistry experiment. I now put the tea bag in for a minute, and then I take the tea bag out because I've got the colour that I want in that water. If you keep the tea bag in, it'll keep getting darker and darker and darker, and I don't want that. So I'm going to put those in now, making sure all of them stay submerged. So I'm done, and as you can see, it's going to come out just the colour we want. So I'm going to pop that back in the jug, and I'm done. With the patch now the perfect colour to blend invisibly into the bedspread, Sarah can start stitching it on. So I've pinned the bedspread onto the new linen. The new fabric is underneath. This is obviously the bedspread on top, and that's the area I'm patching. And I'm using what's called an invisible thread. It's um, a very, very, very fine polyester thread so that really not much of the patch can be seen. Right, well, we've finished the actual patch of the bedspread with the new linen, but it's a corner piece, so I've had to be able to transfer the design over. So I've traced a design from one of the other corners. Luckily, they're all exactly the same. Then I've traced the tracing onto tissue paper. I'm now going to sew this tissue paper onto the linen, tack it on in a blue so that I can see where I'm going. Right, I'm down at the end now, nearly. So, very carefully, 
we, without dislodging these blue stitches, we rip off the tissue paper. And then what I'm left with underneath, you'll see I've got a, effectively a sketch line of where I'm going to go. So now I've got some cotton perlay, which I've matched to this linen. I'm going to recreate the trellis here, the inside bit of that, so the brother to that one I'm going to create there. I've got a bit of a quandary now. I never put and shouldn't put knots in my work, ever. Marion's mother has put knots in her work on the back. So do I put knots on the work on the back or do I do how I should do? And I think I'm going to put knots on the work in the back so that it looks as much like Marion's mother as possible. So against all the rules, I'm going to go in from the back. So I've got quite a lot to do, but it's fun anyway. It's great. Despite the ups and downs, Dom has nearly completed the restoration of the 1930s seesaw. You're making a lot of noise out here. I know, sorry. Hey? Yeah, I know. Just uh, the final assembly now of the seesaw. It's looking smart, no? It is looking smart. You have cleaned that up well. It's coming together. Oh, Just blimey, look, you've already done one side already. Yeah, steaming ahead with one side. These, yeah, these are going to end up sitting out here. This is all very nearly there now, but uh, just lots of little fiddly nuts and bolts. OK. If you don't mind giving us a hand. OK. I hold that, I hold that. You're going to poke that through the holes, line these up. Oh, that goes this in is, the I'm middle. So, this yeah. is proper this fiddly. Is, yeah. <laughs> this is... I'm like... so glad you're here, Jay, because I don't even know if we can do it with two of us. Can we do this? <laughs> all right. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. All right. So that's got to go through this hole, through those two in the middle. Through there. Through there. Oh, let me spin it. There you are. Thank you. Cool. Perfect. So basically. So hopefully now, if yeah. we let go, that should. <laughs> look. <Yes. laughs> well done, man. Brilliant. That is cool. Look. But that's holding. Look. Yeah. Does it spin as well? I really hope so. It should do. Oh, over there. Isn't that cool? That is very cool. Look, it goes up and down. Yeah. Round and round. The younger <laughs> ones in our family are going to really enjoy this. It's brilliant, isn't it? This seesaw provided Joanna hours of fun as a youngster, but the years saw it deteriorate with missing parts and rusty components. But hours of patient endeavor by Dom have revived it, ready to be enjoyed by a new generation. Oh my goodness, great, great <laughs> unveiling. Hello. 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 How are you? Hi. I'm Jane, Molly. your name is? Molly. Molly. Betty. Betty. And you are? Daisy. Daisy. And hello again. Hello, how are you doing? You all right? Yes, fine. Who, who have you brought with you then? Why? They're very dear family friends who I've known all their lives, and Daisy I've known all her life. Oh, Daisy. So, have you had a go on this when no, it was working? No, it's always been broken. It's always been broken. Oh, it's always, oh, you've seen this before as well, then? Yeah, in the back of the garage. Oh. It's just like... <laughs> just shoved at the back. Yeah. OK, right. So, Janet, when you brought it in, what was it like? Oh, you know? it was in a very sad state. Right. A lot of chip paint and rust, and I wasn't sure you were ever going to be able to make it work again. So what would you like to see underneath this blanket? Um, uh, a really nice big seesaw. OK. okay. <laughs> it goes up and down, around, around. OK, all right. It doesn't look much, does it? doesn't look much. It doesn't look much. OK. So, girls, are you ready to see this? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay, Come on, let's do it. <gasps> wow, wow, that's amazing. Wonderful. Oh, Isn't it's it amazing. amazing? It's beautiful. It used Fantastic. to be a lump of oldness. <laughs> a lump of oldness? <laughs> yes. That's a good way to describe Technical it. Technical term. Yeah. yeah. But now it's new. It is. It's yeah. a, a work of art. It's does, just amazing. Does it look better than it did before? Yeah. Are they going to be allowed to have a go on it? Well, what we'll do, we'll take it Come outside. On, let's go. And yeah. you can have a go on it. If you, you're smiling already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. yeah. Go on, let's take, take it outside. outside. Yeah. Come on. You ready? 
Oh, they're keen. They're All right. On. They're on. They're on. Just make sure you be safe, girls, yeah? Yeah. And go round and round. Push it. Oh, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> try and fly, try and fly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Very good. Children did it. <laughs> My legs are too strong. Oh. So yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, that is perfect. That's perfect. That's it, perfect. yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. Children. My children played on the seesaw, so it brought back memories of that. Did you play on And the myself, of course. I, I could never imagine it being that fun. It's yeah. so far, it's all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> It's Team Fletcher, as siblings Steve and Susie join forces to repair a shooting stick that helped a weary writer survive a literary tour. Susie brought over this shooting stick and asked me to make a new one of uh, these units here. It's to tension up the leather seat. And I was in the middle of making one and I suddenly realised that this is actually a bicycle spoke with one of those tightening devices that, that is on a bicycle wheel. So I went over to Dom and asked him if he'd got a bicycle wheel spoke, and in his drawers he had one. And um, it makes my job ten times easier. So I'm just going to cut this off to the right length, hook this into here. I'm hoping this is just going to tighten up nicely. That's good. There we go, all ready to take over to Susie. She might think I've made it. There you go, what do you think of that? It looks professionally made, doesn't it? Well, of course, you made it. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I've actually taken it out of one of Dom's drawers. No. Yeah. Naughty, <laughs> naughty boy. It's an actual bicycle spoke. OK. Yeah. Well, brilliant. OK. Perfect, thank you. OK. I'm just going to move on to making the leather that's going to cover the actual seat. So I've chosen this pigskin because it's incredibly strong but thin. Um, it doesn't have a tendency to stretch easily. So that, along with the straining wear, we know that it's going to be a seat that's going to stay strong for a very long time. Susie cuts out two pieces of leather that will encase the webbing above and below. all looking good so I'm just going to start gluing it I just need to glue them together so I want a really strong contact here just need to let that sit and cure and then I can start sewing it together Really happy with that. With the seat finished, Susie can turn her attention to the handles. OK, so I've got my leather. Um, I'm using some pigskin, which I've soaked, and that's going to allow it to stretch around the curves of the handle. As this dries, then the leather really pulls tight, and you get a really nice, smooth finish. It'll become a little bit lighter in colour, and that will match the seat, and I'm hoping that Brian's going to be very happy with that. After hours of meticulous hand embroidering, Sarah is putting the final few stitches onto the bedspread, first created in the 1920s. Last stitch in, tiny last stitch there. Really satisfying coming to the end of that. So it's all done now. I just need to weave in at the back. So once that's pressed, 
It'll look much more like the original. And hopefully she'll be really pleased. Hopefully she won't see it. That'd be great. She has to look for it. <laughs> Hoping Sarah's expert artistry has managed to repair her beloved heirloom, Valerie is back to collect the piece her mother created nearly a hundred years ago. I've missed not having it about. Everything that uh, is left of her is, is those embroideries. Hello. Hello. Hello, Valerie. Hello. Yes, thank you. Hello, hello. Hello. Are you excited? Very. Yes. <laughs> So what are you hoping to see here? Repairs. OK. Beautiful embroidery. <laughs> <laughs> and clean and in a, a decent state again. Okay. As Mum would have wanted it. As Mum would have wanted. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shall we show her? Yeah, let's. Gosh. Gosh, look at that. Have you spotted the repair? No. It's turning the shift. I haven't it? even spotted the repair. Where is it? <gasps> That's your rip. <gasps> Goodness me. That is incredible. I hope my embroidery is up to your mother's standard. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. You've done a brilliant yeah. job, Sarah. Well Thank done. Thank you. I think it's amazing. Yeah? Absolutely incredible. What would Mum think of it Beautiful. now? She'd be very, very pleased. Yeah. Good. Very pleased. Absolutely beautiful. All right. Let me give you a hand with this and get it out to the car for you. Thank you. Sarah? Thank you. That's God my pleasure. bless you. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, OK, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye. The bedspread looks absolutely amazing. You wouldn't know there was a hole there. It's absolutely incredible. I cannot emphasise how much it means to me. I mean, it, it means the world to me, it really does. With the bedspread safely on its way home, Susie is also on the final stages of her assignment, attaching the new seat sling to the writer's shooting stick. This is always a really fun time because I get to see the final results. So we come through the handle portion, put the spoke through. So I'm just going to screw this little cap piece on. And then, so when you're going to use it, you just pull the seat open like this. And there it is, nice and secure, nice and tidy, ready for me to give to Brian. Can't wait to see his face. Eager to see what Susie has achieved, Brian is back at the repair shop, today accompanied by his wife, Hazel. I've come uh, to collect my shooting stick, which belonged to my father. I'm really looking forward to it. The shooting stick is really important to Brian. It, it made him talk about his father so much. And although I never met him, he's become real to me. Hello. Hello, Susie. It's good to see you, Brian. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good, good. And who do we have here? This is Hazel. Hello. Hello. Yes. Oh, so lovely to meet you. So how are we feeling? Feeling very excited and a bit nervous, I think. Wow. Are you ready to see what I've been able to do? Yes, I'm really looking forward to it. OK. All right. <gasps> oh, Goodness me. Goodness. It's just That's like awesome. new. No touches. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, please. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Just open it up. <laughs> it's really, it's really cool. lovely. And you managed to replace the the missing spoke as well. Well, that was Steve. Oh, right. Yeah. I've got two people to thank. Yes. What do you think your father would think? Well, he'd be very um, proud, I'm sure, that I've gone to this um, trouble, or you've gone to this <laughs> trouble, <laughs> um, to make it like new again. And it's uh, important to me because of its memories, but it's also important as something I really want to use. Good. Um, mm. I like to have a little rest now and again, and 
This is just perfect for it. You can't set your eyes off it, can you? Yeah. <laughs> It's more than I um, hope for. It's really marvellous. It's been absolutely delightful meeting you and being part of your story. I thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And thank you. I can't thank you enough, really can't. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Enjoy many, many miles of walking. <laughs> and sitting. And sitting. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Are you on it? Yeah. The shooting stick's really comfortable. It's uh, wonderful. I'll be using it a lot. <laughs> you have to be careful, though. <laughs> Otherwise, you can uh, fall yeah. off. Won't be able to get you off it now, will I? <laughs> My father will be very proud, I think, to think that we managed to get the uh, shooting stick repaired. Very special memories.